Today we're going to be talking about making pesticide applications efficient and effectively. My name is Greg Kruger, and I'm the Cropping System Specialist at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I also need to thank my co-authors on this slide, Lowell Sandell and Cody Creech, for their help in preparing and putting together the information in today's presentation. The process for pesticide efficacy is a complex and complicated process. On the slide, you can see a lot of different steps that go into making a pesticide application. At the top, we see the spray tank. We were going to add our various different products, our pesticides, to that spray tank, eventually leading to the biological effect that you see at the bottom of the slide. All of the different processes on the left are inputs that a grower or an applicator would have the ability to make or environmental conditions that could affect the application of the product. On the right, you see different processes coming out of the application at various different steps, processes such as drift, volatilization, as well as runoff. All of these things are things that we must consider to make efficient and effective applications. And all of these processes will ultimately affect both the efficacy as well as the economics behind the application. With every pesticide application, we talk about ideal droplet sizes, both in terms of efficacy as well as off-target movement. We know that drift is primarily from the smallest droplets that we see. The very fine classification is going to be the one with the highest drift potential. However, if we go to an extremely coarse droplet, the bottom of the chart, that may not be the most effective droplet size to get the best efficacy. So with every pesticide application, we need to consider both drift and off-target movement. Now, the different classifications you see in the table are approved by the ASAE or ASABE standard, S572. This classification gives applicators an idea of what the range of different droplet sizes that they may encounter from various different applications. This information can be found at the back of any spraying systems or green leaf or other nozzle manufacturers catalog. In 2011, at the Soybean Management Field Days, we conducted field studies at each of the four locations you see on the slide, Bancroft, Clay Center, Cortland, and Elba. At those sites, we planted the five different species, some of which can be seen in the picture to the right. We planted an amaranth, this was a grain type amaranth, flax, velvet leaf, non-roundup ready soybean, and non-roundup ready corn. Across that, we would spray one of five different nozzles with one of several different products. Each of these applications were made in four replications at each site. The purpose of the study was to understand how different spray qualities affected the efficacy of various different products. In order to get different spray qualities, we used five different nozzles. An XR-11002, which gave us a fine spray quality. An XR-11003, flat fan nozzle, which gave us a fine to medium spray quality. A Turbo T-11002, which would have given us medium spray quality the AIXR-11002, which would have given us a coarse spray quality, and then an AI-11002, which would give us an extremely coarse spray quality. With each of those, then, we looked at the efficacy after the application. In the next several sets of slides, you'll see the data that we collected from the 2011 field day sites. The data collected from each of those sites is a culmination of all four locations. And what we see on the various different slides on the x-axis, we have the droplet size, and that's the DV10 value, which is the small end of the spray droplet size for each of the different nozzles we looked at. So we're really trying to estimate the drift potential with that particular number. On the y-axis, we have the efficacy, and you'll notice that we've shortened the range to try to get a better feel for the fine differences between the efficacy of various different species as well as different herbicides. So on this particular slide, we see glyphosate. The formulation of glyphosate that we used for this particular study was Roundup Ready Power Max, and this was sprayed across the amaranth that we're looking at right now. Also, it's important to point out that the rate of glyphosate that we used was half of the labeled rate. Now, while we wouldn't recommend this for any kind of an application, this does give us a good feel for what the difference is between efficacy, because we've reduced the efficacy by using a, a sublethal rate. However, with the glyphosate, you can see we've got greater than 95% control regardless of the droplet size. The fine droplets are in purple, the red is the fine medium, the yellow, the medium, the blue, the coarse, and green is extremely coarse. So you can see, as we went from fine nozzles to extremely coarse nozzles, the droplet size has gotten larger. And like I said, with the Roundup, 
we do not have a difference between the efficacy. Now in this table, you can see the exact same layout, the droplet size on the x-axis and the efficacy on the y-axis. This time we have just a little bit less control with the fine and the fine to medium size spray droplet. And you can see as we go to the medium and then the coarse, we continue to see an increase in efficacy. While we got greater than 90% control with 11 ounces of power max, you can see that there's a slight difference in the amount of control we get from various different droplet sizes on velvet leaf. Glyphosate is one of those products that works really well across a wide range of different droplet sizes, so it's important to recognize that this systemic product is really not reflective of a lot of the different pesticides we handle. On this slide, we can see what we got from control of amaranth using first rate. First rate is in the ALS chemistry, and first rate is commonly known as chlorancelam methyl. On this slide, you can see that the coarse size spray droplet had the greatest efficacy, but half a rate of this product, we really didn't get great efficacy with any of the components. However, it did show that that coarse size spray droplet worked a little bit better than either the fine, the fine medium, the medium, or even the extremely coarse. Bring into mind that we can get spray qualities that are too large or too small, which can reduce the efficacy of any particular product. The control with first rate on velvet leaf was a much different story. We need to keep in mind the particular species that we're looking at trying to control, as well as the product that we're using. With first rate, we got very variable results, as you can see, with control ranging between 55 and 80 percent control on the velvet leaf, but really no real tie to the droplet size. Last year we used Clarity, which is dicamba, and the purpose for doing that is the growing interest in dicamba and 240 resistant crops. We were interested in seeing how growth regulators affected the control based on the droplet size in which they're applied in. And what we see is that very much like the glyphosate on the amaranth, the size of the droplet sprayed with dicamba really didn't make too much difference on the efficacy. When we looked at the dicamba on velvet leaf, we saw just a little bit of a trend downward as we got the larger droplets. So you can see as we went from the fine medium at nearly 50% control using a half a rate of dicamba to the extremely coarse, we lost about 10% control. As we continue to progress throughout this presentation, you'll notice that this 10% difference is really not dramatic, but it is something that we need to be cautious of when it comes to resistance management and other types of applications where we may have marginal conditions for control. Reflex is a PPO inhibitor, and what you'll see is dramatic differences between the droplet size and the spray quality we get with these particular products. On the amaranth, as we've seen in previous slides, a very stable trend between droplet size, you can see a much greater difference now. With that fine to medium sized droplet being the greatest for efficacy, the fine droplet being very, very small and seeing reduced efficacy there, as well as reduced efficacy with the coarse size spray droplet, indicating that we've probably either gotten too small and we've had a lot of drift off of the target area, or we've gotten too coarse and we're not getting very good coverage for this particular product. Now, when we look at the control of reflex on flax, once again, a half a rate, but we can see dramatic differences between the fine and fine medium, and then also between the medium and the coarse spray qualities, indicating that we really need to be in that medium-sized droplet range to get the most out of this particular product. You can see that we've lost nearly 30% efficacy now if we've gone to a coarse size or an extremely coarse spray quality. Part of this is due to the species that we're trying to control, as well as part of it being the type of product we're using. On this last data slide that we have, we have SelectMax. SelectMax is an ACCase inhibitor and is used for control of grass species in broadleaf crops. This particular product is not going to have any activity on broadleaf species, but it will have good activity on our grass species. The data that we're showing here on this particular slide is representative of volunteer corn, and you can see that just like the reflex, we're going to have a very wide difference in droplet sizes in terms of efficacy. The fine droplets giving us very low control, as well as the coarse droplets giving us lower control. And that fine to fine to medium size spray droplet giving us the greatest control of this particular product. To bring everything that we've talked about in the last few minutes into some sort of a conclusion that we can digest, I wanted to point out that the time of easy is over. 
with resistance and failure to control weed species in our fields, a lot of applicators and growers are moving to situations where they're using products other than just Roundup alone in the tank. When that's the case, it's important to take your time and slow down, think through the process, make sure that you understand both the weed target as well as the particular product that you're using to get the most out of every product that's purchased. For example, if we're using a product like Select Max in conjunction with Glyphosate, we're going to want to move away from a droplet size that's a coarse or extremely coarse to a droplet size that's going to give us more of a medium-sized spray droplet. That way we get the most out of that Select Max without really compromising the efficacy of the glyphosate. With that said, it's important to always read and follow the label. A lot of times there's a lot of information in the label that can help us with pesticide applications and can give us a really good feel for what the best route to go is. Additionally, if you would like more information, please contact myself or Lowell Sandell at the University of Nebraska. With that said, I would like to thank the Soybean Board of Nebraska for funding the research that has gone into this project.